The latest offerings from Apple, Google and Xiaomi have finally arrived. But how does the new iPhone stack up against its predecessor and how do all of them compare to the Snapdragon powered S24 Ultra in four different benchmark tests where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. Both iPhone CPUs are running on 3 nanometer nodes but the A18 Pro found inside the 16 Pro Max brings its max clock speed up to a whopping 4.04 GHz, which is the highest of the lot. The three Androids sit on 4 nanometer nodes, with the Pixel having the lowest clock speeds here, and the Samsung and Xiaomi matching each other with 3.4 GHz speeds thanks to overclocked versions of their chipsets. Both iPhones pack in LPDDR5 RAM and NVMe storage, while the three Androids are kitted with LPDDR5 X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage, aside from the Pixel, which sticks to UFS. 3.1. All of them have 120Hz LTPO displays, except for the Xiaomi which has a 144Hz adaptive sync display. They have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes, with the Pixel's adaptive battery off to boost performance, while the iPhones have no performance modes. Today we will be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, Geekbench 6, 3 Mark Wildlife Extreme, and 3 Mark Steel Nomad Lite, since the Pixel can't run Solar Bay, and in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. Will the latest flagships from Apple, Google and Xiaomi be enough to keep up with the competition? This is Tech Nick and without further ado, let's find out. We're going to kickstart things off by checking their battery percentage at the start of the test. We'll compare this at the end and get a milliamp hour per minute reading. We'll also be checking temperatures between each benchmark and we'll test it out at the start of the test here as well. We're sitting at a room temperature of around 19 degrees Celsius. Checking all of them now while they've been idle for a couple of hours. The iPhone is the coolest while idle, while the Xiaomi is the hottest. The first benchmark test that we'll be jumping into today is of course Antutu version 10. Now for those of you unaware of the changes between version 9 and version 10, they have changed up CPU to optimize support for multi-core parallel processing. GPU is now based on Unreal Engine 4 and it has two new 3D tests. The first is this one, known as Seasons, it is a high stress test. And next up we have Coastline 2.0 for ordinary GPUs, but none of these devices have ordinary GPUs, except for maybe the Pixel that is, because it's not really a benchmark slash gaming performance device, but we'll get to that in a second. They've also changed up storage and memory. So ROM is now more optimized to improve test efficiency. RAM is now divided into bandwidth and latency to clearly demonstrate LPDDR performance. User experience has changed up, adding PDF document processing. They've also added processing capabilities of large pixel images above 2K. They've added decoding of H.265 and encoding of H.264 video files and they've even added editing because yes some people these days edit on the go on their phone and no I am not one of those guys. Now many people say that you can't compare Antutu between iOS and Android. Technically you can't because they do run on different architectures but I guess you kind of want to. You, you always have this need to compare things because at the end of the day these are all smartphones and either you're going to pick up an iPhone or you're going to pick up an Android so why not see which one is going to get the better score and it is also interesting to note that you can compare certain things such as user experience so on and so forth within Antutu. Now the Pro Max iPhone has of course changed up this year and one of the biggest noticeable changes is of course the display. It's now large at 6.9 inches though it packs in this exact same pixels per inch as its predecessor, the 15 Pro Max. So even though it has a larger screen, it shouldn't really affect battery life. And it really shouldn't considering there is now a larger battery in this guy as well. So that will be interesting to see. And I will soon be doing a very detailed true to life battery drain test. So stay tuned for that one. The iPhones of course finished first, then the Samsung, then the Xiaomi. And of course, no doubt the Pixel is finishing last over here. And with that getting to temperatures over here, the iPhone 16 Pro Max jumped up to 41.4 degrees in Celsius, so it's the coolest, but the 15 Pro Max actually added the least with the Xiaomi adding the most in terms of temperature and it also peaked at the highest. And now jumping into our second benchmark test, that being Geekbench version 6, which yes, you can compare across platforms, iOS and Android and vice versa. Geekbench 6 has changed up a little bit from Geekbench version 5 as well. Multi-core is now tested by one workload used and all cores work together on that shared objective instead of doing multiple individual tasks 
like we saw in Geekbench version 5. And getting to temperatures, of course, the iPhones finished first again, and then the Samsung and Xiaomi, once again last was the Pixel over here. And this time, the Xiaomi seemed to have throttled a bit, going backwards. Not too much throttling, just a little bit, negative 1.6 degrees Celsius, but it is still the hottest here. The 15 Pro Max actually jumped up the most, and the 16 Pro Max kept the coolest. Next up, we have 3 Mark, and we'll be starting with Wildlife Extreme. None of them on unlimited mode over here. Wildlife Extreme is rendered at a 4K resolution, but it is targeted primarily for high performing mobile devices such as these. The next test that we'll be doing is going to be 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite, and that is for exactly these as well, high performance devices, but also light computers, gaming computers. So it is gonna be more strenuous than this is, and that only renders at 2K resolution where this renders at 4K. So scores will definitely be a little bit different over here. Now, when it comes to these actual devices, the five devices that you have on the table over here. The iPhones are the only devices here with two main cores, and those two main cores are clocked at the same on each device, whereas the Xiaomi has four main cores because it's running the Dimensity 9300 Plus, and the only thing that's changed from the baseline Dimensity 9300 is that one of its main cores has increased, but the other three have stayed the same, and only one of its main cores out of the four peak at its highest frequency of 3.4 gigahertz. It also has no efficiency cores, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in terms of battery efficiency here. Now, all of these chipsets are manufactured by TSMC, except for the Pixel, which oddly enough sticks to Samsung architecture. The Pixel is also shifted back to eight cores from last year's nine core CPU. I don't know if you guys remember that. Now, like I mentioned at the start, we'll be running Steel Nomad Lite and not Solar Bay, and we can't run Solar Bay, unfortunately, because the Pixel does not have hardware accelerated ray tracing like all the other devices managed to pack in and the Pixel's GPU actually clocks the lowest at 940 megahertz whereas the new iPhone 1.68 gigahertz then last year's iPhone the 15 Pro Max at 1.4 gigahertz the Dimensity seen inside of the Xiaomi at 1.3 gigahertz and then of course the Adreno 750 seen inside of the Samsung running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 overclocked CPU sitting at 1 gigahertz. Now getting to temperatures over here right at the end after we have done all the benchmark tests after both 3D Mark tests the iPhones jumped up the most here, but the 16 Pro Max still kept the coolest, while the Xiaomi throttled after Wildlife Extreme, but then jumped back up. And weirdly enough, the Pixel ended off the hottest. And getting to overall temperature from the start to the end of the test, the iPhone 15 Pro Max had the least overall temperature gain, but the 16 Pro Max wasn't too far off, and it stayed the coolest throughout the test and ended off the coolest too. The Xiaomi was the hottest throughout the test and peaked at the highest temp, but the Pixel ended off the hottest and gained the most temp overall. When it comes to battery drain throughout the test, the Pixel has of course the largest battery here, so even though it drained the same as the Samsung and Xiaomi, it received the worst milliamp hour per minute rating. The iPhone 15 Pro Max drained the most, but it has the smallest battery, so its milliamp hour per minute reading was better than the Android's, while the 16 Pro Max drained the least and ended off with the most efficient milliamp hour per minute drain. And now getting to what we've been waiting for, the scores. When it comes to Antutu version 10, the Xiaomi placed first. And you gotta remember that it is actually the lowest priced device here, yet it scored significantly higher than any other device in terms of Antutu score. However, the iPhone 16 Pro Max did perform better in terms of user experience. That said, the 16 Pro Max placed third and in between the two was the S24 Ultra. Fourth, we had the 15 Pro Max and fifth, we had the Pixel. The Pixel once again placed last when it comes to Geekbench version six single core score, but you gotta remember that Google primarily focus on software. So while it might not get the highest scores in benchmarks and it might not perform the best in terms of gaming, you're actually gonna notice that this device feels just as smooth on the daily as any of these other phones here. Fourth, we had the Xiaomi 14T Pro, which is very odd, but it wasn't too far behind third, which was the S24 Ultra. And second and first, still water toward the iPhones with the 16 Pro Max taking quite a bit of a lead as opposed to its predecessor. When it comes to multi-core performance, the only change up in terms of placements here is that the iPhone 15 Pro Max and Xiaomi 14T Pro switch positions here, giving the Xiaomi 14T Pro a lead over the 15 Pro Max with over 7,000 multi-core score points over here. And not too far behind it was the S24 Ultra. The Pixel was way low down, but the iPhone 16 Pro Max was streaks ahead of everything else here. When it comes to graphical benchmarking, that being 3D Mark over here, starting with 
with Wildlife Extreme, you gotta remember that the Xiaomi did throttle off the Geekbench, which is really not a good sign for long gaming sessions. But without running back-to-back -back benchmarks, it actually scored quite a bit higher in my review, my full review that is, so be sure to check that out after this. Overall though, it placed fourth in this, and then third was the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Right at the bottom was the Pixel 9 Pro XL, no surprise over there. The S24 Ultra placed second here, and not really surprising, the iPhone 16 Pro Max placed first, which was quite a bit ahead of its Android counterpart. The Xiaomi once again throttled when it came to Steel Nomad Lite, and you gotta remember that throttling is not necessarily a bad thing, it just means that when the CPU is getting too hot, the device tries to cool it off, which directly affects its performance. So. Like I said, it's not a good thing for gaming and it did do better last time I tested it out in my full review, but once again, it placed fourth over here. All the placements are the same when it comes to Steel Nomad Lights with the Pixel being dead last, the iPhone 15 Pro Max being third, which is ahead of the Xiaomi, of course, the S24 Ultra placing second and quite a bit ahead of it. Once again, the iPhone 16 Pro Max placing first. Overall, I must say I'm quite impressed with the leap forward that we've seen from the iPhone 16 Pro Max. It is performing better in terms of CPU, GPU, memory and user experience across the board when compared to its predecessor. It is very expensive and my favorite thing about the new iPhone is that large screen so it's nice to see that they paired that up with a larger battery so that battery performance is still very good. Now while the Xiaomi didn't exactly place the best in anything other than Antutu, you gotta remember it is the cheapest device here so in terms of bang for buck it is a rock solid device. So overall that leaves the Pixel 9 Pro XL in last place here with the Xiaomi beating it in fourth place even though it did tend to throttle a bit. Third place, we had the iPhone 15 Pro Max overall, and second, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. First place throughout all of these benchmarks, most frequently placed first is the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Let me know your guys' thoughts on all of these devices, which one you would rather have in your pockets on the daily and why. This is Technic, and I'll catch you in the next one.